Frida Kahlo self-portraits. Frida Kahlo was a Mexican painter known for her many portraits, self-portraits, and work inspired by the nature and artifacts of Mexico. In many of Frida's portraits, we will note the image of roots. Sometimes the roots are growing around her body or growing to, from the ground tied to her body. And this reflects in a symbolism. She usually symbolizes the roots as a theme for personal growth. But in a negative way, it will be trapped into a particular place, time, or situation. So Frida liked to use lots of symbols in her paintings. Most of her facial expressions are very serious on her self-portraits. In a lot of Frida paintings, we will notice that she tied different stuff uh, on her hair or around her head. And those artifacts are traditional decoration and symbols from Mexican heritage. Look at the background of her paintings. She usually uses beautiful bold colors and she has a lot of nature elements, insects and animals. Some of these animals she had at her house. They were her pets. Other ones she just used it as a matter of decoration. This one is one of my favorites. Today we're gonna make a Frida Kahlo portrait inspired by Frida Kahlo self-portraits. So for this lesson, we're gonna need a piece of white paper, a black marker, some coloring tools, could be crayons or colored pencils, and a pencil and eraser. So we need to visualize an oval shape on this part of your paper. It's a little bit above the middle. The, we need to leave some space for the hair and for the neck later. So place your hand in the middle of your paper and let's try to make an oval shape that is bigger than your hand. And if you need to erase this part, you can sure do that. Note that how I'm using my pencil very lightly. You need to make sure your pencil is lightly because you're gonna erase these pencil lines later. Okay, so once you have your oval shape, we need to divide it in half. So we're gonna make a straight vertical line more or less in the middle of the oval shape. So I'm just doing that visually. Of course, you can use a ruler if you want to, but that's not necessary. It does not need to be perfect. So let's try to figure out where is the middle of this oval shape again. And then we're gonna make a vertical line right in the middle, where you think the middle is. Make a little mark right there. And if you think the middle is right there, go ahead and make a straight horizontal line. We're gonna make some different marks. So now let's figure out what is the middle of this half portion of your oval shape. So I think my middle is around right here. So I'm gonna make a little mark and then I'm gonna go ahead and make another horizontal line. And now I'm gonna divide this next portion over here and I'm gonna make a little mark where I think the middle is, and then I'm gonna make another horizontal line. Perfect, so now we have the divisions to make our facial features, as the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So the first part we're gonna be doing are the eyes. So I'm gonna make two little dots um, on this left side here, and they are about, I would say, a finger space from the edges, and then I'm gonna make another two dots about a finger space right there. Now I'm gonna connect those dots with a slightly curved line, and those are going to be my upper eyelids. Now we're gonna do the lower eyelids, so another curved line connecting those dots, and they look like almond shapes. Those are perfect for your eye shapes. So let's make the iris, let's make a circle where you think the middle of your eye is. And they are just touching the upper and the lower lid. So I'm making on both eyes my iris, and now I'm gonna make a smaller circle, and that's gonna be the pupil inside of the iris. That's that small black dot you have in the middle of your eye. There we go. So this line over here is gonna be the nose. So I'm just gonna make a little curved line for the tip of my nose. And 
two small curved lines like parentheses around that, and that's going to be my nostrils. I'm also going to make my nose bridge. So they are small, slightly curved lines connecting the nostrils to the corner of your eye. Now let's do the lips. So I'm marking two dots on the sides of my line, and I'm going to make these dots connecting to my middle line, and that's going to be my upper lip. Now I make a lightly curved line in the middle, and then I connect the line to the corner of the mouth. I'm going to mark a little line for my lower lip. So I'm connecting the dots to this little middle mark point. There we go, now I have some lips. Let's go back to the eyes and make upper lid. So that's an extra line above your eye, and that's usually the fold of your eye. So the top part will be the eyebrow. So I'm gonna make two lines right above my eyes, and those are my eyebrows. On Frida case, we know she has a unibrow, right? So I'm gonna make these two marks connecting the brows together. And they are usually thicker at the middle and thin at the edges of the face. There we go, we got our facial dimensions. For the ears, we're gonna use the line from the eyes connecting to the line of the nose. And I'm just making some C shapes um, on, for my ears. Now I'm gonna shape them a little bit. I'm just gonna make a slightly curved line in the middle of the ear. And it looks almost like a peanut shape. For the neck, I'm going to make thicker than my mouth. So I'm just measuring where my mouth is, and I'm going to create two long, slightly curved lines for the neck. Okay, so for the hair, I'm just going to be about one finger space, I'm going to make a little dot there, and I'm going to create this really long lines from the middle touching the ear. And I'm going to do several lines like this, and those are going to be the lines of the hair. And usually Frida has this kind of hairstyle that is divided in the middle and tied in braids. So I did several lines and they go outside the oval shape because I want to make them bigger to give her a real size head. And they do not need to be the same on both sides. Um, any way you do it, it's going to look nice. Now I'm going to make some hair decoration. And I'm going to start with a really simple shape. It's just kind of a circle on top of her head and smaller circles inside. You can also do some wiggly lines to create some flower kind of shapes. Those decorations on Frida head, they do not need to be the same as well. So be creative and find ways to create some nice decoration that you can color later. I'm gonna do a mix of this kind of circular decorations and some flowers, and I'm gonna do this rose. To make a rose, make a circle and do some layers around it. And you keep doing those layers until you close it in the middle, just like that. Creates an illusion of a rose. And I'm gonna make some other wiggly lines over here to create a different kind of flower and perhaps a circular decoration. So be creative and design the flowers and the decorations the way you want it. Or you can keep pretty simple like the ones that I'm doing right now. Okay, so now I'm going to do some lines for the braids, and I'm just going to make some simple lines connecting the top decoration to the side of her head. And I'm going to do about three or four on this side, and do the same on the other side. And look how simple they are. They are just touching the hair with a slightly curved line. So now it's time for some jewelry. So think about an earring that you would like to add to your Frida. I'm going to do a small hand as part of one of the traditional Mexican decorations that I see sometimes in Frida's drawing. But you can go ahead and make some other kinds of earrings 
and they could be the same on both sides or they could be different. It's your own choice. Also go ahead and make some necklaces or some other kind of decorations around the neck. I'm gonna do this big bead with balls decoration that I saw in one of Frida's self-portraits. Uh, now it's time to do any adjustments. So I'm gonna adjust the nose a little bit, but go ahead and adjust whatever you feel like you want to adjust. Once you're happy with your drawing, you're gonna trace everything with a black marker. So remember, you're not gonna trace those guidelines that we created first, those vertical and horizontal lines. You're just gonna trace all the rest. So pay attention and go ahead and trace your lines. And after you trace your lines, you're gonna go ahead and erase all the pencil lines you had on your drawing. Just hold your paper carefully when you are doing that step. Okay, so finally it's time to color. So go ahead and take your coloring tools. It could be crayons, it could be color pencils, it could be even markers. Whatever you have at home will work to color this beautiful Frida that you just made. When I'm coloring, I like to use a mixed blend of colors. So for example, in the hair, I use mixed color of black and brown, and I did the same thing with the eyes. You can choose a nice color for the skin tones and for all the decorations. And remember, when you use different colors, one on top of the other, it just looks better. It looks more fun and realistic. Don't forget to color every single part of your drawing. That's gonna make a difference. For my background, I'm gonna do a green shade and you can see that I'm doing the same kind of pencil stroke in a horizontal way. And that's a nice way to color a large area of paper. You just need to hold your paper carefully because at the edge, it might flip a little. I like to take time to color my drawings and it took me quite some time to do this, Frida but I think it's fun and looks much better when you put more attention and time and effort into your drawings. The final part I'm going to do on my Frida, I'm gonna add some rose cheek colors on her cheeks. So I'm gonna take a darker shade of her skin and I'm gonna add some shading inside her ears and also on her cheeks. And I'm trying with a lighter color first to see how it looks. And I'm gonna add a darker color on top just to give some rose cheeks to my Frida. I really hope you like this project and I would love to see yours. So if you feel like you wanna share with me, send to me on our Instagram art page at p8artroom.